Hello everyone, I am Erica of beatingschool.com and you are watching No One Has To Beat Alone, my weekly open beading workshop to make sure that every beader all around the world has company. Today we are going to beat the Vanessa Carduy uh, motif that in my, my case became a cute little pair of earrings, but it can be anything on your bead mat. Before we would start, then I hope that you can hear me, you can see me, please let me know. I see Sarah, I see Catherine, I see Lita. Thank you so much, you are so kind. <laughs> Joyce, Kota, Gisela, and Facebook user friend. So lovely ladies. You can watch today's workshop in real time from the Beading School Facebook page, from the Beading School Facebook club, from YouTube, even from my private profile. And in case that you are watching from the club, which is a closed safe space on the internet for Beading School beaters, then you might need to add permission to my broadcasting program so I can see your name and greet you personally. All you need to do is open the description of the video, that is the text just above the video on Facebook, and then there is a link uh, that, uh, that if you click, then it should give permission to my program to see you. And Kata and Shelly and Sue says that I'm frozen. Let's try to unfreeze it. I don't have that many ideas what I can do, unfortunately. I will try to reload. So let's see. I hope this is all right now. I am not in my usual premises. I am visiting the Beating School Treasury this week. So my internet is not as strong as in my beading room at home in Amsterdam. So that might cause indeed problems. Can you please let me know if the face cam is okay now? Oh, oh, very blurry. Okay, let's see. Let's see, I, will, I, I hope that the second camera will be good enough for beading. On Tuesday when uh, we had the live design, uh, session, then it was working. So I hope that it is okay. We have like all kinds of Wi-Fi uh, thingies here, which make the signal stronger. So I hope that that it will work. Okay, Sharon, and so good to see you, Sharon. She says. The blurry issue went away for me after a few seconds. Loretta says on YouTube it's clear. So hopefully it will be okay in a few seconds. Otherwise, if not, then I would like to ask you to go on the Facebook channel of Beating School so we can beat together. But let's see. In the meanwhile, I see more beaters joining. I see also Sue and Nancy and Cindy and Carol and Renate and Shelly and Malka and Marta and Sherry and Carol and Hydron and okay, Catherine says nice and clear. And is here, Facebook user friends. Forgotta is also good now. Jill is here. Loretta Ingrid. Miriam is here. Maya, Terry. 
Malia, Jen, and many other Facebook user friends, and Sangeeta. So today we are still working from the dream of Sibylla Bidding School Academy box. And the design that we are beading, it's a cute little motif, not so big in size, but full of bling, actually. It has in such a little, on a such a little surface, as much as 13 pieces of Preciosa crystal stones, six round uh, six three millimeter bicons, six four millimeter bicons, and in the middle, an AB coated special Preciosa chaton in the eight millimeter size. So let's see what else do we need for Vanessa Cardui. And in the meanwhile, I would like to tell you about the PDF file that makes it easier for you to follow today's workshop. And also, of course, you can save it to your computer, you can print it and use it later, or simply also open it on a second device so you can watch the video, what's happening on my beadmat, but also on the other screen you can enlarge, for example, your and the illustrations. So to get the PDF tutorial, you need to navigate to no one has to be alone.com or go to beadingschool.com and then click the no one has to be alone part in the main menu. And that's where you can download the PDF tutorial. For three days, it's available as a gift from Beading School to you. And otherwise, or if you would like to support the video, then you can download it for a small amount. So ladies, let's see what do we need for today's jewel. The focal of Vanessa, as I said, is an eight millimeter Preciosa Chaton. Uh, often I get the question if a different kind of eight millimeter cabochon, for example, a Naker or a Rivoli works. And in this case, I would strongly suggest to stick to a Chaton because also it's very important, not only the diameter, but also that how tall it is. But also, of course, you can experiment and adjust it if you have something else on your beadmat, but you will need to figure the modifications out on your own. Then, besides the cabochon, you also need a six millimeter, a bunch of six millimeter Miyuki Slender bugles, 12 pieces for one motif. You also need two millimeter true to fire polished beads, six pieces, and then you need the bicons that I mentioned. Six pieces of the four millimeter bicons and six pieces of the three millimeter bicons. Besides that, you need a bunch of seed beads, so size 11 and size 15 Miyuki round seed beads. For the size 15s, I used in the original three different colors, but it's up to you if you would like to have a unified, a more unified uh, outcome, then one color is of course sufficient. Uh, then you need one color of the size 11 round beads. And I used two colors for the Miyuki size 11s, but again, you can go for only one color if you would like to. The rest, it's optional. And it's up to you how you would like to finish off your jewel. So in case that you need earrings, you want earrings, then of course you need earring components, but you can absolutely make it into a little dangling brooch, for example. You can make it into a bracelet, into a pendant. So there are different opportunities. You can also add different kinds of hanging pieces, 
uh, that's actually what I did with mine. So if you visit the Building School blog and or section of gift tutorials on the page, then you will find two types of uh, hangers. Actually, sorry, I'm, mm, they are a uh, gift for or uh, for Building School Academy students. Uh, the current Beading School Academy students. So there are also two types of beaded hangers available on the website. So ladies, let me know if you have questions about the material list. Mechtab says, I can tell you, you are home. You are glowing, Erika. It's so hot here. <laughs> So, yeah, the glow. <laughs> it's so much warmer than in Amsterdam. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really happy to be here. But it's very, very hot also. <laughs> and hi, Lutka. And hi, Samia. And hi, Gemma and Kristen. <laughs> so, ladies. If you don't have questions about the material, about the materialist, then let's start beading. And I will switch now to my hand camera. So afterwards, please let me know if you can still hear me, if you can still see what's happening on my bead mat, okay? So... I just switched and according to my computer, you should be able to hear me and see me, but I would like to wait for your confirmation. And thank you for your kindness. And Marta says she can see me and hear me fine. Wonderful. Malia also. Thank you, lovelies. Then let's start beading. We start with six pieces of four millimeter fire polished beads. I pick them all up on my fire line. I'm using 0 0.12 millimeter fire line. 0 0.0.12. So I pick up the six pieces. I leave a bit of thread at the end that will become my tail and then I will secure it, my tail thread, and I will secure it later. And I bead one more time through all the beads to join them into a circle. This will be the base of the bezel. And I finish step one by beading one more time through the very first bead that I picked up. So altogether, I bead through that bead three times. And I have this circle here with six pieces of four millimeter fire polished beads. I would also like to greet Sandra and Michelle and Angelica who had a job interview. I hope it went well. And let's see what's happening in step two. In step two, I am adding size 11 Yuki Delica beads between the fire polished beads. So I'm exiting a fire polished bead. I pick up a Delica and then I bead through the next fire polished bead. Super easy. And this is how I bead all around my little motif. When it's a circular motif, then I like to mention the magic number. The magic number for me in beading is the number of repetitions that we need to do to bead all around the motif or the number of beads or groups of beads that we would like to add in that specific step. And in that case, 
In this case, it's six. Our magic number is six. We have six fire polished beads, six Miyuki Delicas, and later we will also work with six groups, six beads, six repetitions. And we finish by beading through to the uh, beading to the second delica bead that we added because unless there is a specific purpose, uh, then I like to start the next step from the second or third bead, but not right away from the very first that I have added. And Angelica, keeping every finger crossed for you, and please let us know how it went when you get an answer. We are already in step three. In step three, we will start building the top of the bezel. So I am exiting a delica bead and I pick up around 15 seed bead in my first color a 2-2, two, two, another round 15, a Miyuki Delica in my second color, round 15, 2-2, two, two, round 15. And then my thread, look carefully, my thread is hanging from this Delica from the left towards the right, and I will bead through the Delica that is to the, that is the previous one, so opposite of where the thread is hanging, and I beat through it from left to right, so in the same direction as the thread is hanging from the next delic. And I beat back through round 15 to, and through to So this is how it looks like at the moment. The around 15 and true to parts will be part of two sequences neighboring each other. And then the round 15 delica round 15 will lay flat on the top of the chaton. And Cindy joined us. And let's see what's happening in step four. So now I am exiting the true tool and I pick up round 15, Delica round 15, true tool round 15. And again, I bead through a Delica that is to the left from my original exit point in the opposite direction. So when I pull my thread, then another arc over a fire polished bead is formed. And I bead back through the last round 15 and through two that I picked up. And this is actually what I am repeating three more times. So after this first arc, I pick up round 15, Delica, round 15, two, two, round 15. Then I bead through the Delica that is towards the left. I pull my thread and I bead back through round 15 and through two. Angelica says, this team is super strong in all the ways you can bezel an eight millimeter cabochon. And indeed, I think the Dream of Sibylla team, that is, I think, one of its strongest points that brings you such a big versatility of bezeling. 
and I'm really glad that you like it, Angelica. I also just saw your beautiful jewel that you posted in kind of like starting out from the Sibylla colors with the kites, but then adding your personal touches in the, in the new and motif, and it came out beautifully. And I'm really, really happy that that motif, that pendant, made you like the kite cabochons more because I think that they indeed deserve a bit of time to get used to, but it's a super nice shape. They don't work in every situation and maybe not the easiest to work with, but it's worth the effort. So thank you, Angelica, for giving it another go. So I finished my repetitions and I have only one sequence open now. So I am sliding in. Yay, my amethyst opal, a B preciosa chaton. Custom made for you, dear beating school readers. Unfortunately, I don't see your name, but someone likes it. <laughs> and also, ladies, I would really like to thank you for going for the Preciosa Chaton AB boxes. About half of them are or have already found new loving beading homes, so I can't wait to see them sparkle on your bead mats. And let's see what's happening in step five. In step five, I am closing the bezel, and since magic number, I already have six true two beads. I don't need another true two beads. All I need in this step is to pick up a round 15, a delica around 15, then bead down towards the fire polished beads through the very first true two and round 15 that I have picked up in step three. I carefully arrange the beads to close up on top of the chaton. And then I bead through the delica that is at the base of this true two and round 15. And I bead back through the same two beads, round 15 and true two. And after this step, the, all the beads are, nearly all the beads are on, uh, in the bezel in their places, but the chaton is not sitting tight yet, so you might need to hold it with your thumb so it does not fall out. How is it going, ladies? Please let me know. How are you doing with Vanessa so far? Kathleen started a bit early and she says, what an adorable motif, lots of sparkle. I'm really happy that you like it, Kathleen. What is it going to be on your bead mat? And Angelica says, thank you, Erica. Nguyen and Motif really made me feel better about the big pile of the kite crystals. And predictably, I added some cream to the mix for the contrast. And I love how you solved the colors. I know that this was not in your comfort zone. And sometimes, indeed, the academy is like totally up your sleeve and sometimes it's a bit challenging sometimes it's not in the comfort zone but i'm so happy that you make it your own with some modifications from your stash if necessary cindy also loves the chaton in this i'm really happy cindy and hi don there is going well, she says. It is so cute, I love it. Miriam says, it is going well. The motive is so super beautiful. I'm really happy, dear Miriam. 
So I see that you are going well. And let's see what's happening in step six. In step six, we are tightening the top of the bezel. So I bead all around through the combinations of round 15, delica round 15, then again round 15, delica round 15, and so on and so on and so on. So once you went through all of them, and the very first one one more time, then take a second to, again, adjust the chaton nicely before we would completely tighten it to make sure that the top of the crystals, crystal sits nicely exactly in the middle. And let's see what's happening in step seven. In step seven, I'm adding even some sparkly round 15s. These are my, my precious real gold plated gold iris round 15s. And I am adding one in between every one of the groups. So I pick up one of these special round 15s and then I beat through a group of round 15, delica round 15 and I repeat the same. I pick up a round 15 and I beat through the next group of three seed beads. These new seed beads added in this step are covering exactly the tiny hole of the true two. The true two is turned so it's not Mm, not horizontal, but it's ver vertical. And if you haven't added the seed bead on its top yet, then you can see into the true two. So I want to cover the whole, the holes of my true twos with these tiny beads. And in the meanwhile, Angelica found a nice color that she is adding to the colors that we are working with these weeks. She says that from the Jardin Majorelle team, she went from the rainbow peacock milkies, and she finds that a beautiful addition. I nearly said a beautiful addiction, but maybe that's true too. <laughs> And I finish off this step after I added all my six round 15s. I finish this step by beading down through a true two and round 15. And then beading from a delica that is sitting between two four millimeter fire polished beads from left towards the right. So this is how it looks like after step seven. Again, give a bit of attention to your chaton to make it sit nice in the middle. Oh, and Miriam says, I am using those uh, 24 karat size 15s as well and saved bicons, the four millimeter and the AB caps for this one. Oh, Miriam, that's so sweet that this one is your special motif where you saved the most special and sparkly used beads from your box. <laughs> and let's see what's happening in step eight. In step eight, I am adding bugle beads in between 
tetelika is so I'm exiting a delica. I pick up two miyukis and then I beat through the next delica. I pull my thread carefully to make sure that I don't pull the thread on the edge of the bugles. I have a lot better experience with slender bugles than classic ones regarding sharpness around the holes, but still I like to be careful. So this is what makes the star, uh, well, the motif star-shaped. All the pairs of bugle beads that I am adding To make sure that I don't pull the thread on the edge of the bugle, what I noticed that I am doing, that just before it would be super tight, I'm actually uh, uh, pulling the thread around my finger to make sure that I notice it before pulling it tight. Because if I just pulled, then it there might be a moment when it starts to, you see, slide on the edge of the bugles. So just before that would happen, I pull my thread backwards a bit and hold the bugles in my right, uh, between my right uh, uh, hand fingers. And that's how I'm pulling it absolutely tight. So once again, I pick up the two bugles I bead through the delica, I kind of pull the loop around my finger to stop it from tightening for 100%. And before I would tighten the pair of bugles completely, I hold them between my two fingers to like carefully place them where they belong. And that way I am not pulling the thread on the edge of my beads. And I finish off this step by simply beading through a delica after adding the last pair of bugles. So this is how it's looking at the moment. It looks like at the moment. Step nine already. And this time, we are adding some delica beads on top of the points of the stars. So I bead through a bugle bead, the first one out of a pair. I pick up a delica, just a sec. They are misbehaving here on the desk a bit. So I picked up a delica, I bead through the second bugle out of the pair, and then without beading through the delica that is sitting in between the fire polished beads, I bead right into the first bugle from the next pair. So the two bugles, the second one from the previous pair and the first one from the next pair, they are getting pulled together above the delica between the fire polished beads. And now I also have a delica sitting on top of the point of the star. And I'm repeating this around the motif. Magic number six. Six delica beads need to be added.
and I finish this off by beading through a bugle and to the first Delica bead that I have added. Angelica is mentioning the mini challenge and I happen to know that we have some beautiful prizes but most importantly I think it's so nice to like make a library of your memories of different beading school academic teams maybe out of challenge pieces so I hope that I will be able to see many of your entry pieces and I can't wait to check them out all. And now we are making the motif super sparkly. So I start by picking up around 15. In fact, this is my third color, a four millimeter bicon right away a three millimeter by comb and around 11 seed bead and then i bead through a miyuki delica that is part of the inner circle it can be a little bit tight as you can see so be careful so not to scratch the chaton with your needle So I carefully pull my thread and as you can see, this sequence will connect the delica beads on the outer edge of the motif and the delica beads sitting in the inner circle of the bezel. I bead back through all the beads that I have just picked up and then I bead once again through the delica that I was exiting at the beginning of the motif. I bead through a bugle bead, another bugle bead, and the delica. So I have added sparkle over the first point of the star and then I'm going to do the same to complete it. So again, I pick up around 15, four millimeter by cone, three millimeter by cone, round 11, four beads on my needle. I carefully bead through the delica bead in the inner circle i bead back through all the six all the four new beads and then i get into position for the next point by beading through delica bugle bugle and another delica and then i do it for the third time round 15 four millimeter bugle three uh, by con three millimeter by con round 11 i beat through a delica I beat back and Delica. And I repeat it three more times. So let me know, please, ladies, how are you doing? I'm curious also that 
what is your intention with the motive? Are you beating a pair of earrings like I do? Or something else? Miriam is making earrings. Are you beating them in the uh, Sibylla colors, dear Miriam, or something else? Well, sorry, I remember now that you just said that you were saving your special beads for this one. So indeed, Sibylla or mostly Sibylla colors. Sherry likes the way of decorating the empty space in between the bugles. And I'm really happy to hear that, Sherry. This part with the bicons makes the whole motif looks, look more dimensional, more 3D. and nicely connects the two levels because the chaton is the highest round stone of all the types that we are usually using. We were talking recently during a coffee time with Erica about different round stones from Preciosa and gemstones and beyond. And the chaton, it, it is pretty tall, so as I bezeled it this way, then there is a significant distance between the top uh, bottom and the top level. And the bicons, this part that I, uh, we are adding now, it connects the two levels nicely to make it into a coherent motif. Gisela is making earrings. Miriam indeed Sibylla colors. Lita is making a charm. And Joyce is also making earrings. So I have just added the sixth part. And oh my God, it looks so good on the camera, I, th I think, with all the sparkle, all the AV effects of the four millimeter bicons and the shot on in the middle. I'm super happy with this one. Sherry is also making earrings in the colors from the box. She says, I made my kids ahead of time so I could make them. And Emma says, I'm also making earrings with the same colors. Ladies, if we accidentally met each other on the street when, uh, during a beating school academy team, then I think we would actually recognize each other, <laughs> even from just looking at the jewels. That would be so funny. <laughs> so ladies. I'm actually at the end of my of my little motif. It's all done. All I need to do is add the findings or any extras that I, I would like to. And I already have a finished pair of earrings, so this will become for me either a pendant or a brooch. I think a brooch, but I don't have the components at the moment. So that we'll need to wait a little bit. Kristen says also the t-shirt would make us recognize each other indeed. 
and in the future, who knows, maybe a coffee coffee mug. Lutka says, I love it. And Facebook user friend also says, beautiful. So ladies, I would like to thank you for today's nice time being together. But before I would say goodbye, I actually saved three beautiful jewels from the beading school club that i really wanted to share with you and celebrate them and celebrate through them the whole team and the whole all the all the beautiful jewels that you have beaded because daily there are so many of them that I can see in the beading school club and it's always a very very joyous part of the day when I can like be happy look at this and look at that oh my god there's a Sibylla bracelet there's a papilio pendant there is this earring and that and it's just such a nice experience so thank you so much ladies for everything but before we would say goodbye to each other then let's stop for a little bit to celebrate sarah's beautiful papilio pendants she already beaded it in two different colors in the original Sibylla tones on the right. And since Sarah was one of our beaders whom we asked to test for us the custom coated Preciosa AB chatons that she already has a Montana AB Preciosa chaton inside that beautiful blue that is on the left. It's very, very lovely, Sarah. Then... I also have here, this is from Terry. And Terry is a super fast beater and she beaded Veronica's mosaic, uh, mosaic jewel. And when Veronica was designing it, then she was thinking about the way how bees and other flying creatures see a flower so that's why she made it into like kind of a pixelated flower and terry has here such a beautiful interpretation of it it's also very luxurious how it's presented on the black uh, neck black jewel display and i see a nice solution also for the uh, for the veil and came out beautiful terry and then i have here miriam and again a design from or veronka and this is called the buzz when you look closely at the design then you can see that the pasty blows and the pearl and this Suvon rhinestone, they look like a little little butterfly or bee on the on the outer edge of the pendant. There are six of them, and Miriam put together this beautiful pendant in different shades of pink and purple, sparkly purple, and gold. Get a little butterfly at the bottom. And I love these three jewels and I love all the, all the jewels that you are adding. Uh, it's also super nice to read what you write about your experiences, what is something new that you are learning, what is something that is first maybe causing uh, a bit of like... Uh, well, when you feel that a little brainstorming is needed and then the group uh, adds all the different thoughts and helps a beater out of a, out of a standing uh, mode and then I see later the jewel finished and that is a super nice thing to witness. So... Thank you, ladies. I would also like to share with you two important beadwork news that are happening. So one of them is that this year, again, there will be 
International Beating Week in the middle of the summer, this time from the 22nd of July to the 30th of July. And it's organized by the Bead Workers Guild. And the theme is Spread the Love. So everything will be focused on heart shapes. And as always, there will be lots of beady activities and workshops happening. Beading School is, of course, participating. So I will tell you more when I know when, uh, all the different interesting activities are published. And thank you, Guild, for organizing this. And one more thing. This is beading school news. So we made something new happen. So now, if you visit the beading school bead shop, then you will find a pair of fuchsia boxes full of custom coated Preciosa chatons with an AB coating, a selection of cold tones in the moon box, and a selection of warm tones in the sun box. Both boxes uh, are hiding 10 different colors. And these were actually made possible by thanks to the thanks to the beading school community and how you are inviting your beading friends to join us because this is a project when of course there is a certain uh, quantity that the company asks us to order and finally we could make it happen thanks to the growing number of beaders in the beading school club so I would like to thank each and every one of you that you are here and you are sharing the news about all the, uh, all the sparkly things happening here. So thank you, ladies, and have a wonderful rest of the day. See you soon and happy beating. Bye-bye. <laughs>